It's not enough to know that prayer is a requirement for the believer. The essence of understanding the requirement is that you begin to leave the practice on a consistent basis. In fact, what I was trying to say to us last week is, if you do not know the way of priesthood, if you've not come into the place of intercession, then it means, therefore, that you are not functioning according to design. In fact, the mortal that does not give themselves to priesthood, that does not understand the system of priesthood, is malfunctioning. So there are many people who have come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but they are not functioning according to design. They are malfunctioning products in the earth. And you know the thing about a malfunctioning product is that that product is useless to the buyer. And that product itself is useless to the manufacturer. So the buyer cannot use it to do anything. The manufacturer is not getting profit from the product because the number one reason for buying a product is to get satisfaction, is to have a need met. So many Christians are in church, but they are malfunctioning. Malfunctioning in many senses, many, many, many dimensions. Because the number one thing that God wants to achieve with the Christian on the earth is partnership with him. So that the things that are in the heart of God can find expression in the earth. If someone says they are a Christian and they are not partnering with the Lord, the Lord is not getting profit from their lives, that person is a malfunctioning product. And the way the realm of the spirit is designed, is designed in such a way that there is no neutrality. So if God is not getting profit from your life, something else is getting profit from your life. You cannot be neutral. So if you look at the story in Luke chapter 10, if you begin at verse 40, it begins to show you that Jesus was the one that told Martha. He said, Martha, you are distracted by too many things. Too many things. While Martha was leading prayers, that's the picture that God showed me. In fact, I literally saw it like a video. That was the picture the Lord showed me. Many who have come into God's presence, instead of them to be kneeling, receiving light from him, because it's in his light that you see light. Kneeling at his feet. A songwriter many years ago said, down at your feet is my highest place. What they are doing is that they are busy. They are roaming around, doing so many things. But Jesus said to Martha, he said, this thing that Mary has chosen, she has chosen the best. But you, Martha, you are encumbered by many things. That's why many of you have lost your prayer lives. That's why many Christians have lost the gift and the graces of intercession that used to exist in their Christian expression. There are too many things that we are pursuing. Too many, too many frivolities. Too many, too many mundane things. Your number one place as a priest unto God is down at his feet. That's your number one place. So any Christian that is not committed to prayers, to intercession, that Christian, no matter the many other things that you are doing, you will not be adding value to the advancement of the kingdom. To the kingdom. That's what Jesus was telling Martha. I know we need to eat, but being with me is more important than trying to do something for me. Being with me is more important. I know that things need to be done for me, but be with me first. Be with me. Stay there. Okay, maybe we need to look at it. He says, but Martha was distracted with what? Much serving. Is serving a bad thing? It's not bad. But for the priest, if you have substituted service for devotion, for the priest, substituting service for devotion is a sin. Because for the priest, the correct order in the realm of the spirit is that it is out of devotion that service flows. You do not replace devotion with service. The priest is out of their consistent committed devotion that you can now serve. 
If you've not learned how to be with him and you are doing many things for him, doing many things, even preaching for him, you don't know how to stay with him. In the eyes of God, it's a waste. You are malfunctioning. You are not fulfilling your design. She was dis distracted with much stuff. Let's put it in the amplified. Give me the amplified. Amplified. See how the amplified puts it. Amplified. But matter overly occupied and too busy was distracted with much serving. Overly occupied. This is how many people's spiritual lives look to Jesus. They no longer have time to be alone with him. No time. If you don't give yourself to priesthood, the possibilities that exist even for your own life will only exist to you in, in, in doctrine. You will not know it in reality. So you will know that there's greatness on your inside. You will know that there are things God wants to do with your life. But you only know it. You will not touch it. It is in devotion. When you now learn how to sit like Mary sat. You see, brethren, I don't know how Satan did this thing. Eh? I don't know where he cooked it, but I, I, I felt pain in my heart as we were leading prayer. Do you know that? Originally, when revival broke out in the Nigerian church, eh? what we call the SU revival or what you want to call the holiness movement, when it broke out in the Nigerian church, the emphasis for people who were coming to God were basic. Love God. Spend time with Him. Sacrifice your life for Him. Die for Jesus. But as other movements began to break out in, in, the, in, in the sense of revival, word of faith, the prosperity movement, and now we are currently in the apostolic move, when other movements began to break out, all kinds of deviations began to occur. That's when we now began to talk about what we call dominion theology. When we began to talk about takeover theology, the church needs to take over. You think what Nigeria needs is a Christian president? You think if we have a Christian president, Nigeria will be free? Is that what you think? You think the solution is for one person from the church to become president of Nigeria or governor of Delta State? How many have come from the church? Even the current ones we have, many of them are from the church. Go and check. At least in our state, we have had a Sunday school teacher as governor of our state. Sunday school teacher. A Sunday school. You, you think, is it easy to be a Sunday school teacher? We have had a Sunday, somebody that teaches other people Sunday school in church has become governor of our state. Those years are one of the worst years of the existence of our state. Worst years. Because you see, it's not service. We are not going to take over by leadership. I was so, my heart was burning. Those are the things I've been meditating on for days. There are things that if I see on the pulpit, many people will shoot me. But I'm old enough to know all the years they were doing leadership, motivation, leadership, motivation. We need to raise leaders. We need to raise. Where has it brought the Nigerian church to today? All our motivational speaking and leadership conferences, where has it brought the Nigerian church? Even some of the big names in the leadership movement have run away to other nations. And left you here with the teaching. They've run away. What we need is to get people back to being with the Lord. Priesthood is our solution. If we don't know how to move the hand of God in the secret, positions will not change the trajectory of our nation. It's priesthood that will change it. Priesthood. We don't need more positions. We need more praying men. Men and women like Elijah. The Bible says he was a man of like passion. But he prayed. Let me show you a scripture. I will come back here. Give me James. Oh, my spirit is altered. Give me James chapter 5. Give me verse 13. Let me show you something. 
James chapter 5 verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him go and vote. Is that what he says? Is anyone among you suffering? Let him become the leader of his company. Is that what he says? Let him what? Pray. The answer is in priesthood. Let him pray. The Bible has not changed. The way out of suffering is what? Prayer. The way out of suffering is prayer. This is why in the day of the apostolic fathers and the apostles, when you got born again, they had only a four-point agenda. Teach you about Jesus, the doctrine of the apostles. Teach you about Christ. Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Teach you about the man Jesus, the one who lived, how he lived. And then let you know that this one that lived and was crucified, he has resurrected. He's alive. They will introduce you to the living Jesus. So men who were coming into their company were relating with a Christ as if they walked with him while he was on the face of the earth. The living Jesus. Once they finish doctrine, they introduce them to fellowship. Letting them know that even though you are born alone, you need a company to survive. So it's in fellowship that all of us are trained. All of us are motivated. It's out of fellowship men like Philip rose. Out of a cantonment. It was like a military barracks. It was a training school. So you could take Philip from the cantonment. And Philip would go to Samaria by himself. And the Bible will say when he was living, the whole city was what? Filled with joy. One man. It was a training school. Nobody was jostling for. The people that, as, as, that were ordained deacons, they had to go and look for them. They were not people who were trying to be MDs of Cadbury. And I'm not saying that being the MD of a company is bad. I'm just telling you that that is not the way we are going to save our country. You may not like me, oh, but you see, I've told you many times, when I die, posterity will vindicate me that I did not lie. When I die. Because these things take over. We want people to go to education. We want people to, and they, then let them rise. Let them become the orgas of the company. It, that's not the way countries are changed. You, are, you want to change a civilization? Put your knee on the ground. If people are suffering, let them do what? Pray. Let them pray. I'm not saying don't vote. I have a voter's card. I vote every year. And one of the reasons I vote is so that when I want to talk, I am bold enough to talk. A certain year, when even the entire church was saying, this is our Messiah, this is our Messiah, I said, a lie. Because like, unlike many other people, me, I don't vote by my emotions. I go and kneel down. My wife will tell you, I was on a dry fast in my prayer closet. And part of my prayer was asking the Lord, among these two people, who are you choosing for the nation? He said, the one that is currently in power is my choice. He told me. In fact, one of my pastor friends came to see me in the room and said, you've been praying, what has the Lord? I said, let's go here. He said, no, but the old church was going in the other side. Those eight years are one of the worst eight years of our country. But me, I'm, I'm bold enough to talk because I told people then. So I'm not saying don't vote. But I'm telling you that if you are voting, if you are serving, you are looking for positions to take in companies and to climb mountains and be, to become the head of the mountain. And you don't know the way of priesthood. Suffering will continue. The way out of suffering is priesthood. So once they have taught them doctrine, they teach them fellowship, they break bread from house to house and then they teach everybody how to pray. Prayer. That's why in RCN everybody must learn prayer. That's why we come here on Wednesdays to strike prayer for at least two hours first. Then we stir ourselves up with the word. You cannot survive with prayerlessness. It's impossible. It's impossible. 
And the reason many people are suffering the malaise and the sickness of prayerlessness is they think that primarily what priesthood is for is to get all my needs met. No, priesthood is for alignment. That's what it's for. For alignment. You want to align with what is in heaven. That is what the tabernacle was for. He said, build it according to the pattern that was shown you on the mount. If what is on the earth looks like what is in the heaven, then the realities in heaven will mirror on the earth. It's when that reality mirrors, then all things are possible. That's when it happens. So that technology is to create the infrastructure in the earth so that what is in the heart of God can begin to find expression. If you understand this, you will not know depression in prayer. You will not know what they say, oh, because God has not answered me, I stopped praying. There's a level of priesthood that you do that your motivation is not results. Your motivation is the character of God 